Hey, what's up guys? We're back again with the best deck to dominate over level players. If you're scared of level 14 cards and you don't know what to do when your opponent has a massive level advantage, this is the deck to turn to. With an average of level 11 cards, this deck can crush some of the most over leveled opponents. I'm talking about Evarbs, Mega Knights, Witches, Wizards. They're not a problem if you play this deck correctly. The deck dominates using efficient cards that still give value regardless of card level. For instance, my level nine snowball still gives a knockback and slowdown that's crucial on defense. Even against level 14 minion horde, it still performs the job. And when you fling skeleton barrels at your opponent, it doesn't matter what level it is because everything one shots skeletons. Knight and Bomb Tower give absurd value on defense against mid ladder players. Even at lower level, they'll have enough health to come up clutch. This deck stresses the high level and low skill players in every direction. If you can't run my exact deck, here's a list of substitutions that you can use. Let's roll right into some games and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using Creator Code Tag to make all the daily videos possible. We got a game against Edson, and I saw the H. And I was like, dude, are you gonna have a hard counter to me? Oh my goodness, of course. Why wouldn't you go and drop a level 13 Ram Rider at the very start of the match? But fortunately for us, our Dark Goblin outranges the Ram Rider, so the Ram Rider can't hit it from that long of a distance. Make sure you don't drop your Dark Goblin really close to things that can attack, especially Ram Riders. Yo, the Dark Goblin's giving us so much value. Despite leaving level 10, it was able to clean up everything quite nicely. So we've gotten some tower damage on him, and he's done nothing to us. So generally in this type of matchup, my best offense is going to be Goblin Barrels. Sometimes you can stack up a lot of Goblin Barrels and Dark Goblins and get damage that way. And generally Goblins will be good at cycling at the river, but sometimes you guys just play against people that have got Mega Knight or Splash Damage with Valkyrie. So it's going to be hard for you to break through with that. I'm going to go for Bomb Tower on defense every chance we can. And whenever we see our opponent go in for Wall Breakers, which I assume that he's trying to go in for his Ram Rider and then go for Wall Breakers when our building's out of cycle, we can use our Snowball or maybe like our Dark Goblin and be completely content with our situation. I hate cycling our Electro Spirit at the river because it never reaches the tower. And then also on top of that, it's level 10, so it's just going to die. And it's generally a better card on defense. So then you're able to stun your opponent's stuff for a little bit longer. All right, so we're going to Skeleton Barrel in the back, so the Inferno Dragon's going to get heated by our tower. And maybe we can go for a Snowball here to finish off all the bats. I'm going to go Goblins here. Good stuff. And go for a Goblin Barrel as well. So if your opponent doesn't showcase any small spell that you should be scared of, you can go and stack up a Goblin Barrel and a Skeleton Barrel and be like, yo, now what are you going to do? You're going to have to dedicate two small spells if you don't have arrows or log. That's good. It's really solid stuff. I'm going to go in for probably a Dark Goblin at the river. I generally don't like doing this, but sometimes it can give you some cheeky chip damage that you need. Fire is so fast that even if your tower is able to two-shot it, it's not going to, like, kill it that quick. Oh, man. I thought for sure the Ram Rider was going to go closer to my tower there. I was like, did I drop my bomb tower quick enough? But unfortunately, it went down. All right, we're going to go for a Skeleton Barrel here. The Knight will be tanking for the Skeleton Barrel after the Skeleton Barrel pops, which is extremely nice. Likely going to go for a zap. We'll go for a snowball here. Maybe we can knock back the Inferno Dragon. Oh my gosh, he didn't zap? Wait, what was he thinking? He thought that would clean up? Yo, that was awesome for me. He's got Fireball. I wonder if he's even going to scratch the surface of my towers right now. Man, this might be a game that we win without taking any damage. That would be so cool. All right, I want to drop all my bait cards really far away from my tower, so we disincentivize him from going in for a Fireball. We're going to try to get this Dark Goblin to connect. Yo, it worked. Okay, we're going to go for a really high Bomb Tower, so then he knows that he's not able to hit everything. Okay, please work, please work. We gotta go in for goblins as well. He might freak out in Fireball. I don't want that to happen. I really want to win this game without even a scratch on my tower. Please let it happen for the memes. All right, we gotta go in for like an Electro Spirit here and then a Snowball as well. I think we're gonna clutch up. 15 seconds remaining. I don't think he's gonna hit it. Yes. Okay, all we need to do is stop the Inferno Dragon from locking on my tower. There's no shot that the Ram Rider breaks through. We got this on lock. A clean and pristine victory at the very first game. No damage taken. Exactly the way we like it. Jeez, man. That was such a fun match. Wow, that gets the heart racing a little bit with the Ram Rider and all the goblins accumulated on your tower. But it's cool to play a three-minute match and not take a single shred of damage. Yo, this guy's gonna have E-Barbs in his banner, and he's level 14. Okay. You know how I didn't take damage in the last game? I'm probably going to take a bit of damage in this one. Our level 10 Skeleton Barrel going directly into a level 14 King Tower. Probably not the best play for us here. Oh, man. That was even Splish and Splash and finish off the Goblins. The Spear Goblins, that is. That's unfortunate. Okay, so can we activate King Tower against the Firecracker? I think that's a definite yes. The thing is, am I able to defend everything else? <laughs> that's, a, that's a question that I don't know, guys. I'm going to try my hardest. We will activate King Tower here, and I'm going to go in for Goblins afterward. I'm going to go for a really high Bomb Tower so this guy doesn't get any ideas of going in for a clone. Holy heck, this is super scary. Sometimes when you play against people that you don't know what their deck is and all their cards are a little bit higher level than yours, you're looking at it and you're like, okay, uh, yeah, maybe our level 10 Dark Goblin can kill a Harry Potter that's level 13. We'll see what happens here. I can go for like an Electro Spirit in front, but it's not going to do much. Oh, great. 
wow, that wizard would typically die. I'm used to that wizard dying there. That's so lame, man. Okay, what can we do? We can go for like the skeleton barrel here and play really aggressive. Generally like when opposite lane of these high level players. Oh, level nine snowball. Can you kill everything? Okay, cool. That's a level 12 goblin gang. Level nine snowball still performs what it's supposed to do. As I said before, Snowball is a great card because of the pushback and the slowdown of your, your Snowball. Because since it slows down the goblins, it didn't get damaged. Whereas like the Zap, it doesn't really have that long duration of slow. Ooh, that Firecracker did not die. <laughs> Took a while for that thing to fall. Okay, we can go Dark Goblin and then we can go for Goblins afterward. And then I think I can go in for a Snowball. I don't think it's going to kill the Princess. Of course it doesn't. <laughs> but it's okay. The moral support is all that matters. Does our Dark Goblin get one shot? No, it doesn't. Cool. All right. Ooh, we are learning interactions here. Level 13 Princess is not one shot a level 10 Dark Goblin. That's cool. We can go for like a Skeleton Barrel here and then maybe go in for a Goblin Barrel in the back. That's looking okay. That's looking decent. If the Double Goblins are going to be able to give us value, the, the Double Barrels of Fun. Come on now. Ooh, yes, Skeleton. Sublime value. We want to cycle Knights in the back so we can cycle more of them. The card that you cycle earlier is the card that you're going to get back to a bit faster. We're going to have to Bomb Tower here because there's too much splash damage coming at us that we need to be able to finish off. Obviously, the Wizard's going to be a huge problem for our deck. So we need to kill that with our Bomb Tower and then also hopefully have the Knight tank. Okay, yeah, he's got Clone as we expected. Uh, that might take out my entire tower. I don't know. A little bit scared. No, Dark Goblin's definitely dead. But maybe we can make something happen with our Goblin Barrel Counter Push. Come on now. Come up, Clutch. The Knight. The Knight. Oh my goodness. I was hoping the Knight would say goodnight to the tower. I was hoping it would take him out. Didn't work out. We're gonna go Skeleton Barrel other side, and then I'm gonna try to plant a knight here, so then the wizard locks onto that instead of hitting my Dark Goblin. Cool, that was really close. My Dark Goblin wanted to get hit by the wizard splash, is what I was trying to say out here. I thought I thought it wasn't gonna work out well. So sometimes in these matchups against higher level people, they'll spam a lot to defend stuff. So if you go opposite lane, you're not even trying to take the tower there, but you're gonna force out enough elixir to be able to take the tower, is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes your best offense is just splitting up their elixir so then you can make it happen. We're going for a Goblin Barrel again. I don't know if he's going to take it. I kind of thought my Snowball would do more, but I think one of the Goblins... Let's go. Whew, he was so concentrated on the offense with his clone, he didn't even realize that we were cycling back to a Goblin Barrel as fast as we could. Our speedy spam stole the game before this clone mastermind could get off his push. And we're pushing up kind of quick too, getting the first gold milestone. Ayo, hey, we got a game against Diego. He's a part of the Super Pro Clan. Well, <laughs> we'll figure out if you're a pro player or if you've got level 14 cards and you're hiding under a level 12 mask. A lot of times, people are going to have, like, level 13 Mega Knights, even though they got a level 12 tower. Interesting, man. <laughs> so we're going to go for a Dark Goblin here, and then we're going to activate King Tower utilizing our Electric Spirit. If you guys don't do these placements, always do it. You'll get much better trades overall. Now we're in a Skeleton Barrel on the right-hand side, and we'll see what's cooking. Definitely want to get some damage here. He'll probably go in for, like, a Wizard. What if for a Witch? That was pretty close. That's uh, an interesting card to see here. Is he going to end up having, like, Harry Potter, Witch, Wizard, Pekka? Oh, my gosh. There's the Pekka. As we said it, he just drops it randomly at the river. All right, I'm going to go Goblins because I want to be able to kill the P.E.K.K.A. if possible. I can Electro Spirit to pull everything back. Isn't it weird how people have level 12 powers, but like level 14 cards like this? You wouldn't expect it unless you've played against it a lot. Like me, in mid ladder, I've started to realize that no matter what level someone's King Tower is, you can never trust it. So fortunately, we did activate King Tower, so we aren't screwed against this onslaught of aggression. We might want to go in for a Skeleton Barrel really aggressively and then try to go in for some spam in the left-hand side. Ideally, what happens here... Yeah, wow, he's got Wizard and Witch, so it wasn't wrong. Let's go. We made the prediction before you've even seen his deck. Oh my goodness, that's cool that I was able to know that he would have Wizard and also the, the P.E.K.K.A. All right, we're going to go for a Dark Goblin here and we're going to go in for a Knight. The reason why I'm dropping the Knight in the middle is because we want both powers to start targeting the Mega Knight. And then the Wizard's going to die to the Goblins and we can go for a Goblin Barrel afterward. There has to be so much elixir on the map for us to kill a wizard plus Mega Knight push because there's just so much splash damage. And sometimes you have to use your tower as a resource. This guy is the dirtiest person on this planet. He's got E-Barbs too with level 14 P.E.K.K.A. You gotta be joking me right now, man. All right, so I'm gonna go for an Electro Spirit. I'm gonna follow through with a Skeleton Barrel. I'm gonna expect him to go for Witch or Wizard, so I wanna go Dark Goblin to try to snipe it. Maybe I can Snowball on top of his Witch or Wizard. Did I make the prediction? No, I missed it. I knew he was gonna drop his Witch or Wizard there, but it was just slightly off. Because if I snowballed the back, the Dark Goblin would have stayed alive and then we would have gotten more value. It was a really aggressive play. I just felt really comfortable in my strategy and oh man, I wish it worked out slightly better. No, miss me with that. Don't do those plays out here. Level 10. It's got to hold. It's got to hold. It has to work. We only have one opportunity. If this fails us, we're dead. Please <laughs> stop it. All right. That's an Archer Queen. That's a freaking champion. Get that away from me. It's really, really disgusting that Clash Royale allowed people to get an Archer Queen 
at any level now. Like, you can get this at Arena 1 if you just spend enough money with Pastoral. Oh, man. I wish they didn't do that. I'm going to go Goblin Barrel on the back. And then he's going to go for a Witch. What do we do? The Goblin Barrel on the back is probably going to do the Mega Knight dirty. Yes! 10 seconds. We're going to hold the door. I don't care. You're not breaking through. It's not happening. Even if you go level 14 e barbs at the river, you can't teleport on my towers, sir. This game is all locked up. Got to hit him up with the 20 win emote to flex a little bit. And we'll jump on to the next one. And that win puts us in a position to collect the next reward. What are we going to get? Give me a good champion. Please don't troll me with a Golden Knight. Anything but a Golden Knight. No! <laughs> That's the worst champion in the game. I would have loved to have an Archer Queen or a Skeleton King. Specifically, Skeleton King works in all the bait decks that we've been playing. That would have been awesome. But it is what it is. At least we'll be less likely to get a Golden Knight in the next chest. If you have less of a card collected, there's a higher chance that you'll get it. So Skeleton King, you're next on deck. All right, so we see a monstrous P.E.K.K.A. in this man's banner. We're going to see what he's going to be packing. Probably going to be P.E.K.K.A. We'll see what other cards he's going to have in store for me. I'm going to go Goblin's first play, and maybe we can get some nice damage. I generally don't like doing that. I like saving them on defense, but I didn't really have any other good starting play, and I don't want to wait until the late game. Oh, great! A champion! That is exactly what we hate seeing, especially one that we can swoop up all of our bait cards and get value from our cards. Okay, so maybe we can snowball on top of the Magic Archer to finish it off. I don't want to be able to... <laughs> gonna say i don't want it to survive it's it's gonna get damage on my tower it fires faster than the tower so the magic archer always gets a hit there feels bad but it is what it is all right i'm gonna go in for a goblin barrel and i kind of want to start spamming on the right hand side so we can distract our opponent that's the way that you beat over level players you're not gonna win if you don't do dual lane pressure 99 percent of the time so i'm gonna go for a dark goblin here the prince will likely die to our goblins and our dark goblins so we're a-okay here and then I can go for an Electro Spirit if we need to. I don't think I do. I'm not going to overspend Elixir because every amount of Elixir that you have when you're running these type of decks is crucial for your offense. But notice how he's down a bunch. He lost his Executioner. He also lost his Prince and he lost pretty much everything he has. Level 14 Mega Knight too. Ugh. It scares me, sir. <laughs> Get that thing away from me. I don't know if it's going to die to my towers. I don't think it's going to ever die to my units. So we'll see what we can do. I'm going to go in for a Goblin Barrel here on the right hand side. I'm an Electro Spirit as well. I can't drop my Electro Spirit first like I typically would because Electro Spirit will just die to the tower. Oh, it still died to the tower anyway. Ugh. Yikes. All right. We can go Dark Goblin, and then we can kite his units directly into our Dark Goblin afterwards. So if he spams in the other side, we still have our Goblins to kite his units. Now I can go for a Knight on top of the Executioner and execute him, and then go in for like a Skeleton Barrel left-hand side. Trying to split him up so his multitasking is really getting stressed right now. He has to deal with a Goblin Barrel, a Skeleton Barrel, and I don't think he's got the mechanics for it. Notice how the Dark Goblin locks onto the tower? That's how we want to play this match. We just bombard units on the same side and he only has to look at one lane, then I'm likely going to lose because it's just super, super hard for my inefficient cards to win because <laughs> my, my levels just aren't there then. All right. He's going to go in for a Sneaky Skeleton King ability. I think I can get away with an Electro Spirit. I know that for a fact the Electro Spirit does not kill skeletons at level 13 at my level. So fortunately for us, it works there. I don't know the differential, but yeah, just make sure your, your Electro Spirit kills Skeletons before you drop it, because that has uh, been a very, very bad loss for me before. All right, what are we going to do? Do we want to go for an Electro Spirit on top of the Executioner? Yeah, so I guess it's a three-level deficit. If you're down three levels with the Skeletons of your Electro Spirit, it will not kill Skeletons. So that's the level of disadvantage that you are looking for. All right, we're going to go in for a Dark Goblin. And then maybe go in for another Skeleton Barrel, because I think we snipe the Tombstone. Yeah, if the Tombstone's out of sight, then we go in with all our might. Dude, he got back to another one. Get out of here, man. Don't do that to me. All right, we're going to go Goblin Barrel on the other side, and then maybe shift our weight around. Goblin Barrel will definitely lock on the tower. Forcing out a Snowball is good. Oh my gosh, the Dark Goblin. Oh, the Dark Goblin didn't die even. No way. Even at level 10, it pops off. That's what we like to see, baby. All right, so the Magic Archer will snipe on top of most of our units. Oh, come on. It hit the Skeleton Barrel from that distance. That's crazy. All right. I gotta kill the Magic Archer. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I think I Electro Spirit just to chain onto it and then hopefully have our tower finish it off. We're gonna get a Bomb Tower down here. Maybe the Mini Pack goes towards the Bomb Tower. Nope, it's going directly towards the Dark Goblin. What we don't wanna see. No, Dark Goblin! You were supposed to survive. That's our way of winning, man. All right, we're gonna go for a Snowball because I'm pretty sure that the Goblin Barrel is gonna force out some Elixir and then we can maybe get the Goblins on the tower. Okay, cool. I wish I dropped it directly on the tower. I thought he would drop a spell or something, but he didn't. Interesting. All right, we can go for an Electro Spirit. Does that? Oh, great. That literally kills my Electro Spirit. A snowball kills my Electro Spirit. That's not how it's supposed to go at all. It's supposed to survive Zaps and Snowballs, man. Okay, we can go in for a Snowball here. It doesn't kill the Magic Archer, but it is what it is. 
We can go in for a bomb tower, and I think that that will be okay if we can just drag all of his units into the middle. Man, this game has become intense. I can get a knight down, and then I can go and pull everything back and hopefully finish it off with a snowball. The prince is going to be a problem, but I think with an electric spirit, I should be okay. It's going to pull it back with an electric spirit real quick. All right, we know he's going to go in for tombstones. So we want to snipe that with a dark goblin, ideally. Our dark goblins just don't fire fast enough. They don't do enough damage, man. Come on, dark goblins. You're supposed to do more. All right, we can go in for a snowball, and one of our dark goblins is going to die, but the other one will be able to kill the executioner. Okay, if the executioner is gone, then we can start spamming more units in the air. All right, that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep spamming. Just keep spamming. Just keep spamming. We're going to pull the Skeleton King off to the side. Fortunately, that mini package did not one-shot my uh, <laughs> the bomb tower. I'm pretty sure it would have one-shot the bomb tower. Dark Goblin, come on, spam. Let's win this. I think we got it. There's only 10 seconds left. As long as he doesn't pull out like a mirror rocket and infinite money hacks glitch, we will win the game. Oh, my goodness. Let's go. GG and well played. Pleasure asserting dominance against you. It's never easy beating someone with the Skeleton King when you're running a bait deck, but it is possible. Especially when they have level 14 cards like a Magic Archer and Mini P.E.K.K.A. 2. Sometimes against difficult matchups, it will be an absolute grind of a match. But if you power your way through, the feeling of winning will be absolutely priceless. So this guy's got a referee banner, and honestly, dude, that's illegal to have level 14 King Tower right now. And level 14 Hog Rider cycled in the back first play. Come on, dude. Don't be one of them. All right, we're going to go in for Electric Spirit and a Knight, and then when the Hog Rider comes close, we have to Snowball it back so it doesn't get as much damage as he's hoping for. Dude, two win conditions that are level 14? This man's a maniac! Holy heck, I am a little bit scared because, like, I just don't know if I'm able to stop this. Whoa! Seriously? Bomb Tower is great! How do we kill a level 14 Ram Rider that's a legendary card that costs 5 Elixir with a level 10 rare card? Bomb tower built different. Okay, we're in a good spot. I, I think I can vibe with this right now. I need to run away with a victory against the Hog Rider Hammer and the Ram Rider with the Slingshot. My man's fierce. We're going to go in for a Skeleton Barrel on the left, get him to go and drop all of his Elixir there, and then sneakily go in for a Goblin Barrel afterward. So I'm going to go in for the Knight. Let's see what he does. Is he just going to ignore everything? Is that how these people play? Okay. As Ice Wizard. That's not as high level as his other legendaries. Hmm. Sometimes people pick and choose which cards they level up. And they don't always pick the most obvious choices. I suppose it's a great card on defense. Just choosing his win conditions. Oh my goodness, look at the goblins though! Giving us gobs of damage. We're kind of getting back into the game right now, despite him going in for earthquakes on top of our tower. Where it's just tickling me. Sometimes level 14 players have unheard of strategies. I've never seen someone earthquake after the building's dead. Okay, I hope that the fire spirits don't magically pop out of the furnace and then teleport on my goblins. Looking pretty good. We can go in for a skeleton barrel on the right-hand side. We know he's going to go for a furnace on this, most likely. What do we do? Do we go in for a dark goblin? Ooh, no, no, no. The fire spirit's still going to kill it. My skeleton barrel died before it even walked onto the tower. That's a joke, man. He literally looked at it, and it died. And then the furnace still gave him value. Even if he misplaces the furnace, he got value. That's absurd. Oh my goodness. All right, Dark Goblin, you got to kill the Furnace and then you can lock into the tower. He's going to Ram Rider and he's going to all in me. The Ice Wizard still is able to kill the Goblins. That's ridiculous. We're going to go in for a Bomb Tower here. We are able to pull the Hog Rider and the Ram Rider if he Hog Riders. I think we're okay. Okay, he learned. He learned to drop his Earthquake. This is bad. <laughs> this is not looking good. But here it is. We can go for a Snowball every time that our opponent goes in for a Hog Rider. And that's what we like. Even if they've got double win conditions like so many mid-ladder players will have, the Snowball comes up clutch despite not even having a high level. So much utility. When he goes Skeleton Barrel to the left, with 22 seconds remaining, I just need to hold the door. We're able to go in for a Surround on the Rail Ghost and then go for a Bomb Tower afterward. And it looks like we got this game unlocked. If I can kill this Ram Rider right now and he goes in for a Furnace, yeah, he's not coming through. We won! Let's go, baby! Level 14 player defeated. And he's gonna go for another Hog Rider, but it simply didn't matter. Super simple stuff. This deck is the key to crushing all the overleveled players. If you think they're pay to win, they're gonna turn into pay to lose. Like if you enjoyed, check out the pinned comment for another video on me pushing up with the exact same deck and have an amazing rest of your day.